Hey everyone, I hope you're well. It's time to take a look at Thunderdome. We'll cover some looting tips, best places to land, tips on engagements and overall rotations. I'll end on some tips on how to win the game when the circle ends at Thunderdome because it can quite often happen. First, I'll explain Thunderdome's loot spots. After that, I'll explain the best strategy for landing, looting and engaging on players in Thunderdome. We'll then look at some unique spots you can use for a vantage point to heal or to seek cover. Finally, we'll look at where it's best to rotate next. Along the way, we'll of course throw in the occasional strategies to help you out too. Okay, let's first look at the loot map for Thunderdome. Where does the loot spawn? Here is a loot map. So the loot will spawn in these areas. For the most part, it's quite obvious. Find loot in the metal cages and metal pathways. You can find loot under the metal cage on the right too. And there is a small area just out of view of this image that has loot too. I'll show you that now. Thunderdome is often a high tier loot zone. Apexmap.io has it marked as a 90% chance to be high tier loot. This means a few things, but mostly that high level armor is more likely. Let's bring our attention back to the loot map. We also have this one spawn in the very center of Thunderdome. This is known as a point of interest spawn. There are very few of these around in Apex Legends. It's a unique single spawn node that has a high chance of level three armor. On screen are the exact drop rates. Okay, so with that in mind, what's the best strategy for looting Thunderdome? Well, personally, I think there's two ways of doing things, and it depends on how hectic it is. Either it will be an absolute mess in the middle, you'll get a bit of contest, or there will be nobody there. If it's not so populated, I think it's best to try and land in the middle and spam the armor spawn, then zip up into the cage. This can be a great way to turn around fights right at the beginning because of the health advantage. Regardless of whether you get the armor, I'd suggest ziplining up to the cage above. If it's populated, there's likely to be a person or two up here. You can use the design of the cage to dodge out of the way and climb up behind them. If there's a player, you can try and win the fight and hold the cage. You can holster your weapon and climb up on this wall to get a bigger vantage point of the surrounding area. From there, you have a very good view on the area below you. Not only can you look down and spot players and snipe them, but it can be a great way to spot for loot so that you can save time. If you want to get down into a fight to help a teammate or go for a specific loot spawn, you can drop down the hull, jump on one zip line, then jump on the other, then turn to the direction you'd like to head and jump again. Now, if it's very crowded, for example, when the dropship starts near Thunderdome, going for the center can be a death trap. Everybody will be spamming the loot and it will be heavily RNG based. Here's an example of how bad it can go in this case. So instead, go for the large cage on the north. There's often enough loot up here and if it's contested, you can go underneath to get the loot there. If it's uncontested, you have good sight lines of the center so you can clear up anybody fighting, then swoop in to get the armor if it's spawned. If you take this cage, you also have a zip line straight up to the top cage, where once again, you have the best view and vantage point for initiating in the next fights or just for spotting loot. Once you're up here, it's quite easy to win fights in the area. Generally speaking, it's best not to go up or down the zip lines if somebody is shooting at you. You do become an easy target, so take a moment to do it when players are already occupied with something else. In most cases, you should expect to leave with your team fully equipped with level two armor or higher, and generally speaking, enough weapons and ammo to go around. At this point, you have two choices for rotations. These two choices are either Skull Town or, well, not Skull Town. Simply put, you'll get the most action in Skull Town, but your odds of survival drop because it's just such a hot spot for activity. If you do go Skull Town, you have the option to go on top of the bones. I think this is the best choice because you can gather more information about where fights may be happening, where dev boxes are, and what exact situation you may be getting yourself into. At any point, you can jump down into pretty much any area of Skull Town and get into the fights. 
I'd suggest jumping onto the buildings first so that you always maintain the height advantage and keep a good distance from what could potentially be multiple teams below ready to attack you. If you want to try and survive and don't feel your chances fighting multiple teams, that's alright. The best thing to do would be to skirt around the outskirts of Skulltown. Understand that if you engage in a fight here, you'll want it to be quick because third parties are likely to come from Skulltown. And if you see a respawn ship coming in, understand it's very likely to have lots more attention than just from you. Personally, I think it's best to rotate in either of these two directions, picking up loot and potentially coming into less hectic fights along the way. The direction you take will, in most cases, get you towards the centre of the next ring. There's often not much point going to airbase or water treatment this late as they will already have been looted. If you'd like, airbase can be a good spot to go for action, although it's not as likely as Skulltown action is, even in the later rounds. Okay, so back to Thunderdome. What if things go badly and you can't quite get to the top of the cage? Or maybe you get hunted down and need a spot to heal? Well, thankfully there are small areas on either side of Thunderdome that can be good stop points for looting up a little more safely. You can always leave Thunderdome at any point and go there. If you are in the middle of fighting and need to heal quickly, you can use a number of hiding spots. Honestly, I think this one under the large north cage is the best because so many players are still unaware it exists. If they come looking for you, you can also crawl through this hole here. This spot is also really good if you need to disappear for a short while. Very few people even realise you can walk out here. Yes, there's a 30 second countdown, but that's more than enough time to heal up and take a breather. I think that's pretty much it. Thunderdome isn't super extensive, but there's a good few tricks and strategies to consider when playing here. Thunderdome can be one of the best spots to loot up with high level gear quickly if nobody lands there, and a good engagement spot to master to build up early kills when the dropship starts near Thunderdome. For me, personally, Thunderdome is one of the best landing spots. Not only does it have some of the best loot in such a small condensed area, but the engagements are fun and you're in a great spot on the map for rotations for more exciting areas to fight in. One final thing to talk about is the end game in Thunderdome. It can happen quite often where the last circles will end in Thunderdome, and when this happens it can be very difficult. My first tip would be to always pay attention to the final circles and preemptively climb to the top of the cage. Generally speaking, the team up there will have a far easier time to win the last fights. If you cannot get up there, or a team is already up there, you have a few options. Either wait for an engagement that gives you a chance to push, wait until the next ring comes in which may force the team up top to jump down, or if you're the last two squads, Work together with your team to get a knock, then be ready to push the cage by taking multiple zip lines at once if possible. It's a very hard situation to beat, but you need to get that first knock and then damage another player, then go, 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 whilst you still have the player advantage. Or if you have them, arc stars can work well to give you the chance to climb up there if you get some stuns off. In most cases, if you just down one player, the other two will reactively shoot you when you zip up and you'll be an easy target, so you need to try and heavily damage or knock two players at once before you climb up, or set up a plan to go up different zip lines at the same time. So that's pretty much it. If you've watched this far, I have one question for you. What other area on the Kings Canyon map would you like to see covered like this? Let me know your thoughts, I'll see you in the comments. Cheerio!